Today I'm in Istanbul, Turkey in Yildiz Technical University and we're going to be utilizing the iPhone 14 Pro's camera and LiDAR sensors with the Viadoc RTK Rover attached to capture photogrammetry and LiDAR data throughout the campus. We're going to be scanning this road right here. We're going to be capturing the curbs, gutters, and center lines, as well as additional features from the sides of the road in order to validate the scan data and improve with adjusting. We'll be using the Topcon Hyper SR GNSS receiver, as well as the single point observations that we can capture with the Viadoc in order to improve the georeferencing of our scan data. I can now actually observe points. If I go to the GCP manager, I've already set up my new collection method, which is the Turkey. I'm going to select new GCP. Make sure my Viadoc is connected. All right, everything looks good. I'll hit connect. Let's just set it to 1.5 meters. I think that's good. And I could take a picture before we start. Take a picture. All right, make sure my rod is plumb and measure. All right, good. I'm gonna collect the right side of the road first to get the curb uh, elevation change and just map out everything that we see on the right side of the road. Okay. Call it uh, Turkey Road 1. So the LiDAR sensor is probably going to have some gaps in it and with those gaps hmm. we'll probably have to utilize the images from the photogrammetry because mm -hmm. then all these images here will get processed and have its own point cloud. Fusing them together will fill in any gaps because sometimes images have gaps so the LiDAR fills it okay. and the LiDAR fills the images. Okay, I will scan the second one in the middle of the road. Now the idea here is we may have gaps in our point cloud, but at least everything is georeferenced together. There's another control point coming up here on our last control point. Okay, and good. We'll call this Turkey Road 2. Okay, here's the second one. Okay. Same thing, yeah, we got a couple gaps in there. Yeah. But we can always, yeah, add that additional data in. Exactly. All right, and now we'll capture the left side. We'll have left, right, and center of the road. I love how that looks. Look at that data coming in nice and clean. It's better than I think the other one. The scan's coming out better? Yeah. As I see, there's no gap. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. It's the left side of the road. Lots of detail. Yeah, this one turned out, I think, the best. Now, Yildiz Technical University has reference data to this road utilizing mobile mapping as well as UAV LiDAR. So we've got a couple of data sets that reference our data set and we wanted to compare the data that comes out of the iPhone to the data that the university already has. Over the next several months, Badish, Yulchin, and I will be working on processing this data and creating several point clouds that we can then run statistical analysis on. This would all be in preparation for a publication that we would be releasing at the 39th International Society of Remote Sensing of the Environment Conference taking place in Antalya, Turkey. Well, here I am. I'm currently at the airport and I'm excited to be back in Turkey as it is one of my favorite countries to visit and a great place to do geosurveying research. And I'm on my way to attend the ISRSE 39 conference. Well, we finally made it to Antalya. So the next speakers, the next speaker is Tamimi Lambi from the Ohio State University. The title is Zoot Infrastructure Mapping by Using iPhone 14 Pro and a Pure Safe Assessment. So welcome. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Rami Tamimi. I am a PhD student at The Ohio State University 
And today we are going to be taking a look at road infrastructure mapping utilizing an iPhone 14 Pro. I know that this has been a hot topic by several people talking about mapping using smartphones. So I'm excited to take a deep dive and uh, show you the research that we've done um, with Ohio State and Yildiz University. So a little outline for you. We'll talk a little bit about what got us into this experiment, a little bit about the data acquisition for comparable data sets, the area that we studied, the methodology, the results, and our conclusions. We wanted to look at mobile mapping systems because that to us was a pretty fundamental and pretty well understood way of collecting data. So any mapping system is going to have a integrated GNSS receiver that's going to give you positional accuracy, an IMU that will probably give you any kind of movement measurements and that can be corrected after collecting the data, a LiDAR sensor probably to capture some of the data as well as a camera sensor. And all of these are just like standard sensors that are integrated together to create this mapping system. The system is usually put on a drone, a car, a plane, a boat, whatever the machine is that's operating this is moving at a velocity and collecting this data. So the downside to this is that these systems are very costly. The sensors are expensive, calibrating them together takes time and skill, and oftentimes you're not able to deploy this instantly. You need to plan for it. You need to reserve the equipment. You need to make sure that it's available at a certain date and weather conditions can also play a big factor. And so that's where smartphone mapping comes into play. These smartphones nowadays have some incredible sensors on them. The iPhone 14 Pro in particular has a LiDAR sensor as well as a 48 megapixel camera. It also has its own GNSS and IMU built in, though it is not created for mapping. It's more created for uh, like navigating and orienting the phone. But nonetheless, it can be measured and it can be used for navigation. And there are now third party companies that are creating sensors that can attach to the iPhone in order for it to have enhanced capabilities for mapping. So this sensor in particular is the Viadoc RTK Rover. It's created by a German company called Viagram and they're in partnership with Pix4D to create a mobile mapping system for your iPhone. So for this study, we utilized three different systems, right? We used the iPhone with the Viadoc, we used a UAV LiDAR, and we used a mobile LiDAR system. For the mobile mapping, this is a little misleading. We have a Leica Pegasus on there. We did not use a Leica Pegasus. We used a Velodyne with the Ladybug 5 camera. I don't know if you've seen those, those big giant lenses uh, that come out of it for camera, as well as a GNSS receiver with an IMU to measure all of the positions. For the UAV LiDAR, this was just a Phoenix Alpha 32. We used an OEM IMU sensor as well as a Novatel GNSS receiver. So that system is all set up and ready to go. The iPhone with the Viadoc. So a little bit more about this device. Simply connects through Bluetooth to your iPhone. It has a plugged in antenna to give you corrections through whatever system you want. So in our experiment, we use the Turkish Cores network and then you're getting real time corrections. So your positions are within centimeter level of accuracy. And then you can just collect data as you usually do. So I will then take pictures. I will then have the LiDAR sensor going and it'll scan and collect imagery for me and store it in my iPhone. Our study area was Yildiz Technical University's campus. The university had mapped out about two years ago, so they had LiDAR mapping with a drone and they also had the mobile mapping with the vehicle. So we thought that this would be a great place to actually run the scans. So the app that we used was Pix4D Catch. This is the integrated app for the Viadoc RTK rover. As you see on the left side here, I get my status for my RTK. So we connect it to the Turkish Cores Network. We have a fixed reading on all of our measurements. Uh, we have a live view of the LiDAR and on screen it's just taking pictures and it's going to store it and then later on I can process all that data in Pix4D-Matic to give me my point cloud. Because everything is corrected, everything will already be geo-referenced to whatever coordinate system I assign and that will give us our accurate data set with a phone. Now to assess the accuracy, we utilize a Hyper VR GNSS receiver. This allows us to get some ground truthing on our area of study. Right here we've got 170 points that we took measurements on with 27 of them, that's three points every 10 meters, having X, Y, and Z coordinates. So we had targets laid out so that we can reference X and Y coordinates to ensure that we have horizontal accuracies as well. So the 170 points though, we're gonna be used to create a uh, a ground truth model of the of the road and that is what is going to be our reference for the three different data 
chipsets, uh, and the most important one being the iPhone. So here's a representation of all those red dots are ground truth points that we measured with the GNSS receiver. And then we're going to be assessing the root mean square error as well as the standard deviation. So after we've extracted our data sets, you can see we've got different cross sections on the bottom. And these cross sections will show us where the curb is and where the road starts to bow up so that the water drains down to the gutters. So we were able to extract that just from the iPhone's data set. That comes out of the camera and the LiDAR sensor that are on the phone. And uh, this allowed us to dictate that there's a 20 centimeter height in the curb. And based off of that, we can then calculate where the center line of the road is, allowing us to find the sloping angle for both sides of the road. And so now when we compare this to the UAV LiDAR and the mobile mapping point clouds. What you see up top is this is the LiDAR point cloud from the UAV and after we've extracted the road edges, here they are. Here we are with the mobile mapping system and then the iPhone data set. So all of them were capable of extracting these uh, road edges of the curbs and then when we compared our accuracies, which is the table on the left, we found that the minimum deviation was roughly six centimeters for the iPhone. So that's six negative, positive one centimeter. You might wonder why is there 10 centimeters here on these two? These are the most amount of error that we found. Overall, the RMS was quite similar between the three systems, it was three centimeters for both the mobile mapping and the UAV, and then four centimeters for the iPhone. So we did not want to remove any of the outliers because we felt like we should take a look at all of the data that we collect, maybe some of the ground truthing positions may have had problems, but at the end of the day, what really matters is the RMS, and that is outstanding data to look at. Um, the fact that an iPhone was able to do that. At first glance, an iPhone is not capable of doing much now, is it? Well, no, actually it is. You know, without even having this Viadoc attachment, we can collect pretty relative accurate data if you want to keep it within itself. Once you start to attach RTK corrections to that iPhone, now you're starting to get geodetic positions and absolute accuracy. And it's meeting the same standards as UAV LiDAR and mobile mapping. I mean, these are systems that we've studied and we've improved over the years. And so now to be able to do this with a phone in your hand, it's just giving you a lot more uh, versatility in collecting data. You don't necessarily have to deploy a large expensive system. You can buy a small attachment for your phone that you probably already have and now you can collect the data from your pocket. Now, does this mean it's applicable for all projects? Well, absolutely not. This is definitely better for smaller scale projects. So if you're doing some topographic surveying or something that's you know, within uh, an arm's length, you can get a lot of detail and a lot of accurate data just from your phone. And so with that, I'd like to thank you all and I'm open to hear some questions. Thank you very much. If you'd like to read the full manuscript for our project, then be sure to check out the link in the description. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to learn more about surveying and geospatial technology.